Now you're ready for part three. We have our Alice window open, and but this was just for practice, so I'm going to have you start a new file. You can either click on Edit Code and go to File, or you can just do it right from here. Go to File, and we're going to do a new project. We do not need to save this one, so when it asks if you want to save it, we're going to say no. Now here this pulls up are the tab that we're used to seeing because we saw it when we first got into Alice. And we're going to pick grass if you want to do your project the way that we the way that it shows in the little video. If you want to change the characters in your project, you don't have to use an elephant and a cat. So if you want to change your pro your characters and use a different slate, then you can. But I'm going to pick grass. And it's, we're going to come up to this window, how we started before. Now we need to set up our scene before we get any code. So we're going to click on Set Up Scene again. And I'm going to go ahead and do a search. I mean, I could look for it here, but I'm going to just do a search for an elephant and a search for a cat. Now remember, if you're going to use different objects, then go ahead and search for them. And there's a few cats to choose from here. I'm going to pick this one. And I can leave the whole name there, or I can just shorten it. And I can twist it a little bit if I want to do some rotation. And um, see if I can get them just looking the way I want. And I'm going to search for an elephant. And drag him up here. He looks pretty big. You can pick any of these. And I might need to do a resize because he's pretty big. And then if I want to, I can do some kind of rotation or I can leave him just the way he is. I click back on default. I'll be able to move him forward a little bit. I'm going to set the scene just the way I want it. So you can pause the video and work on your scene and get it set up just the way you want. If you want a little bit of scenery, you can. But don't spend a lot of time setting up the scene. You want to do more time on our coding and not worry about exactly the objects. So you can pause the video, set up your scene, and then when you're ready, just turn the video back on and we'll go on to the next step. For the next step, I'm going to click on Edit Code and we're ready to actually drag the tiles over and have our objects interact with each other and complete the animation. When I click on edit code, now I'm back to this where I have all of the different windows open. And this window is like a preview what, of what's going to happen. I can see my two objects here. And whichever one I click on is going to be the active object that you'll see right here. So if I click on elephant, or if I click on cat. Now if some of your objects are hard to click on, you can also just use the drop down menu. So you can see it right here. I have um, the world, I have the ground, I have the camera, I have the cat, and I have the elephant. So some of you might be a little curious, you actually can control the camera. I'll let you figure that on your own whenever you have time to do it. But most of the time we're going to deal with the objects that we added, and that's going to be the cat and the elephant. Okay, I'm going to resize this window because I want to be able to see this as well as my algorithm. So I'm going to open up the algorithm, and here it's all filled out, and hopefully you have yours and it's all filled out as well. So we'll be able to go back and forth. I can see what the steps are. And over here, I'm going to be dragging the code. So since I have 14 steps, when I'm finished, I should have 14 lines of code. Now, before we even get started, we're going to develop some good programming habits by starting with a comment that's going to identify the programmer. The comment is at the bottom. It's a tile that's in green, and it says comment. You're just going to drag it up to the top, and you're going to put your name. So I'm going to put the word programmer. But you will type your name as the person who's creating this. And it's also a good idea to put the date. So today is the 12th. And then you want to put what program this is. This, you could put that it's A1 because this is Alice Unit 1, Lesson 4, and this is the elephant and the cat. So some good descriptive information here in my comment block. This needs to go in every single program. So when I'm looking at it, I know who the programmer is. You will want to know what date you created it. And when you look back on your old programs, it's good to know all of this information. So you're going to start every program with the comment block. 
Now I'm ready for my first step, and that's the cat is going to move forward two meters. So if you don't have the cat selected yet, you need to select the cat either by clicking on it or using it from the pull down menu. And then you're going to look at the different commands that, that you can have it do. And we want to find the one that's going to make it move forward. So I have, I'm going to see right here is a move. I'm going to just drag this tile. And then I have to make some choices. So which way do I want it to move? I want it to move forward and how far? I can pick these, but if none of these is correct, I can actually type my own number. I'm going to go ahead and pick two. And here's my first step. Cat moves forward two meters. Now as I go, now you don't have to do this after every step, but we're going to do something called incremental development. We're going to do just a couple lines of code and then run it to see what happens. So let's go ahead and click on this run button. And the cat moved forward two meters. If I'm happy with that distance, I can keep it. If I'm not happy with it, I can come right here and I can change the number. Maybe I want it to go a little bit further. So I'm going to type in four instead of two. And then I can test it again by running. And I like that a lot better. So you just if you do a couple of steps at a time and test it, it'll save you later on from figuring out where in the code that you needed to make a change. Now the next one is the elephant is going to turn to face the cat. So over here, I need to select the elephant either by clicking on him or using him from the pull, uh, selecting it from the pull down menu. So I've got my elephant. I'm going to find the command that's going to let him turn to face. So I have a turn here and I can try using that one. But I also have a turn to face and this one is sometimes I think easier to use. So let's drag this over. We've got elephant and it's going to turn to face what? So it has to pick your target and we want it to turn to face the cat. So now I have two lines of code. Okay, perfect. Just what I wanted. Now the elephant is going to say away with you. So I'm going to keep my elephant clicked. I'm going to look through my commands and one of them is say. I'm going to drag this over and then for the text I don't want it to say hello so I'm going to do a custom text stream. I'm going to click right there and then I just type what I want it to say. And we can run this again. Now the away with you went pretty quickly. Everything, the default is for one second. If I want this to, instruction to last a little bit longer, I can come over here to the details. And you see that one of them is duration. So I can change the duration from one second to two seconds or as long as I want. If I want it to go three seconds. So you have a lot of control over what happens and for how long. And you can check out some of the other details. You might want to try changing some of those values as well. And we're just going to keep going. I'm going to have the cat move again. So I'll click on the cat. And it's going to move. And this time, instead of forward, I'm going to say backward. And I had four. You don't see the option four here. So I'm going to go to custom number. And I'm going to type four. And then the, fat, the elephant is going to turn to face the camera. So I click on the elephant again. And then when I go to turn to face, instead of selecting the cat, I'm going to select the camera. Let's go ahead and play all of these steps. Hey, it's looking really good so far. Very similar to the video. The, cat, the elephant's going to say a couple of things, and then the cat is going to resize. When I click on the cat, I'm going to scroll down, and now I'm going to see something that says resize. And the factor is what you're going to put in. So if I want it to double, I'm going to put a factor of 2. Okay. Everything else, you'll probably be able to figure it out. So what you want to do is go through and add all of your code in to match your algorithm. Then another thing that you can do that makes it kind of handy is add in some comments to kind of divide up your code. So this might be the first part. Maybe we're going to call this the introduction. And then after the cat, the elephant's turning to face the camera, you know, this is maybe the, you know, the middle part where um, the elephant discusses his dislike for cats.
And then after a few more lines of code, the elephant's going to run away. So I might add in another comment, elephant runs away, and the cat chases him. So this is another good programming habit that we wanted to develop right away is kind of dividing up our code with some comments. And this will help you when you want to go back and make some changes. If, ever, if you had 14 lines of code with no break and something you wanted to change, it's sometimes a little harder to figure out which one you want to change. But if you divide it up, you can say, oh, from the beginning or from the middle or from the end, these are the things I want to change up. Now you can add more code to your program if you'd like. So instead of them going off camera, if you wanted to do something else, so you can change it up a little bit. You can modify your algorithm to make this program your own. But keep it fairly simple. Just get used to uh, adding code in Alice and creating your animation. And then when you're finished, you'll be able to save this into your account. So that's going to be really important. If you want to find this again, you're going to go to File, Save As. And then remember to click on this PC. Find your student number and then save it in there with a good descriptive name. I suggest using what we used in our comment block. So we called it A1 Lesson 4 and that's what I would call it here. Or you can call it Elephant and Cat. But keep your file names very descriptive so if you need to come back and find it again for an, another reason, maybe we're going to modify some of these programs later on, you want to be able to find it. So give it a good descriptive name. Then you'll be ready to turn it in and with this document and you'll have your first program done.